Welcome. My name is Dr. Helen Messier, and I want to congratulate you on getting your carotid ultrasound done. You have taken a big step in understanding your risk for cardiovascular disease. Well, why is this important? It's because cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death for men, women, and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the US. And in fact, one in every four deaths is from cardiovascular disease. And one person dies every 36 seconds in the US from cardiovascular disease. Now, the interesting thing is that one in five heart attacks is silent. So there is damage done and often without ever knowing that it happened. And of course, it's very expensive. Heart disease costs hundreds of billions of dollars every year. And now you may think that you're doing everything you can to mitigate your risks. You've checked your cholesterol and your cholesterol levels may be normal, but it's the fact is that the majority of heart attacks occur in people with normal cholesterol levels. So it's really important to look a little deeper. And in this short video, I want to walk you through how to understand your carotid ultrasound report. We're going to review what the carotid IMT actually is and how that relates to vascular age. And then we're going to look at what plaque is and why certain types of plaque are more dangerous than others. And then we're going to review the brand new interactive report. So let's get started with CIMT, otherwise known as carotid intimal media thickness. First of all, to orient you, well, I'm sure you noticed that the ultrasound was done on your neck, but to orient you a little bit more, the ultrasound was getting pictures and measurements of your carotid artery, which is that large artery that big, brings blood from your heart up to your brain. Now we measure here because it's easy to access and also because when we find a process happening in the artery walls here, it's reflective of what's happening in the arteries in the rest of your body as well, including your heart. So the picture on the left shows the common carotid artery that splits into two branches. We use the place where it splits as a landmark so that the measurements are always consistent. And on the right, you can see the ultrasound picture of the same carotid artery with the landmark, the line, and where the measurement was taken here. So let's take a closer look at the layers of the artery wall. On the left, you can see a cross section of your artery and how it's made up of many different layers. The inside layer is called the tunica intima, which is really just Latin for inner coat. Now this inner coat is made up of a single layer of cells called the endothelium, and then there's some loose connective tissue as well. And then the next layer is called the middle coat or the tunica media, and it's mostly made up of smooth muscle. So those inside endothelial cells, they can sense what's going on inside your blood vessel, and they'll send signals to the smooth muscle to tell it to either contract or expand, which is how your body controls your blood flow. Now the IMT or the carotid intima media thickness is just a measurement of the diameter or the thickness of these two inner layers. Now, this is important because when arterial sclerosis starts to develop, these layers will start to become inflamed, and this will cause them to get thicker, which causes them to be less flexible and stiffer, which is why we use the term hardening of the arteries. Now, the outermost layer is the external coat or tunica externa, and we sometimes call that the adventitia. So on the right, you can see an ultrasound image with the walls of the artery marked by the green line and the inside of the artery called the lumen. That's where the blood flows. Now, when you blow this up, the area in the yellow block box here, you can see that the ultrasound capture these, captures these layers of the artery, and you can measure how thick the middle two layers are. Now, as we get older, the layers tend to become thicker. And so we can compare your measurements to the population. And that's how we calculate the apparent age of your arteries or what we call your vascular age. 
So what about plaque? Well, plaque happens when fats, cholesterol, and other substances start to build up in sections of your artery wall. Now, we usually measure and think of IMT and plaque separately, although they're really part of the same process. Now, this is a diagram that shows what typically happens with the process of arteriosclerosis. Now, we start out our life with nice, thin, and flexible arteries. And as we get older, and you know, we don't live perfect lifestyles, things like diet, smoking, toxins, stress, they can all lead to inflammation. And that causes an increase in the thickness of that intimal media. When there's a buildup of cholesterol, fat, and cells in the wall, that's when plaque starts to form. And you can see here that men tend to develop increased IMT and plaque a little earlier than women do. Now, it's important to remember that this is not inevitable. If we lead a great lifestyle, we should not have to develop plaque at all. As you can see from this cross section of an artery, plaque can cause all kinds of problems. It can rupture, like you see on the right. And when that happens, it will cause a blood clot to form, which can completely cut off the supply of blood. This is what happens in heart attacks and strokes. Plaque that has a thin covering or cap and has a lot of fat or what we call lipid inside is the most vulnerable to rupturing. We call this soft plaque and it's the most dangerous kind. But the body tries to protect us and over time, calcium will get deposited and a thicker fibrous cap will form over the top. This type of plaque is called calcified and it's much safer than the soft plaque. Now, if you get enough of it, however, it can still start to limit the amount of blood flowing through the artery, as you can see here. Now, plaque that's in between and starting to calcify is called heterogeneous plaque. So we can use the ultrasound to measure both the type of plaque and the amount of blockage and stenosis as well. Now, here you can see a cross section of an artery that has pretty significant plaque. Normally, the artery should have lots of room like this for blood flow. But in this case, there's a lot less room for the blood to pass by. And when we start to see blockages of 70 to 75% or more, then we need to start getting concerned. Okay, with all that, let's now take a look at the new interactive VasoLabs report. Once you sign into your secure portal and click on your report, this is what will come up. The first thing you'll see is a summary at the top with your age in vascular years, basically your vascular age in years. This is what's calculated from your IMT measurement, which is the next thing that you're going to see. Now, this measurement is given in millimeters, and you can see this one's 0.552 millimeters. Now, if you have any plaque, that will be shown on the right with the size of your largest plaque and what kind of plaque it is. In this case, it's mixed heterogeneous, which means it's on its way to becoming the safer calcified plaque, but it still presents some risk of rupturing. Now, when you scroll down to the middle of the diagram, you'll see a representation of your actual results. If you have plaque, it will show you exactly where that plaque is. And also if there's no plaque seen in each of the areas of both your left and your right carotid arteries, like before and after they split. Now it will also tell you the amount of blockage that the plaque is causing, which in this case is minimal at less than 20% blockage. Often plaque will form in the areas of more turbulent blood flow, which is at places where the arteries divide, which is just the thing that you see in this case. Now, then the really great thing about the report is that you can click on these boxes here and you can pull up your actual ultrasound images. Now, there's usually three different views of each area that's measured. And the arrow in this case will point to where the plaque is. And then you can do that with all of the different areas that are measured. It's kind of fun to explore that. At the bottom of this first page, you'll see what percentile you are in for your IM thickness. This is 
we determine this by comparing your measurements to a population of people your same age and sex. And in this case, this person's in the 38th percentile, which is kind of a medium low risk. IMT greater than the 75th percentile puts you at high cardiovascular risk. Next, there's a description of the different types of plaque down here, and as well as a table that shows you where you compare, where your IMT is based on your age to the average population of men is in the blue line and women in the red line here, and you're the green dot. And now remember that soft plaque is the most dangerous kind. And then down at the bottom, you'll see a table that will summarize your plaque. Now, if you don't see anything in the boxes, that's good news, since that means there was no plaque seen. Okay, in this case, you can see the plaque here that's 1.31 in size. All right, well, I hope you enjoy exploring your report and really learning about your cardiovascular risk. I wanna thank you for watching. And I hope that after reviewing your results, you'll feel empowered to take steps to prevent ever having a cardiovascular event, such as a heart attack or stroke. Now, stay tuned for a longevity program that will help you mitigate your cardiovascular risk factors. We'll notify you when it's available. So stay tuned.